Okay, this is the first go little sample for Aaron and Jim. And we are going to ex be exploring the Dart documentation together and annotating it as developers. So anybody else going through this, um, this, this site can like have somebody by their side um, and a sort of asynchronous talk about it sort of thing. So, yeah, so I'm Aaron Kelton. This is Jim Shaw. Say hi, Jim. Hi, everyone. <laughs> and uh, we are the co-founders of a company called Round Robin. And what we want to do is make language learning, like human languages, not programming languages. Um, uh, we want to bring immersive experiences using technology. Um, we won't give away too many secrets about the company, but that's the gist of it. Um, we are using Dart and Flutter to build the technology. As a result, we thought we would share what we're learning as we're learning. So we become better developers. We also contribute to the community simultaneously. Um, and and spread the word about Ron Robin, which I think will help a ton of people in the future once it's uh, finally released. So. The idea behind annotated documentation is um, one that it's it's nice to have somebody guide you through the docs, um, especially if you're new. Uh, but even for me, <clears throat> I've been doing Ruby on Rails for three years, and some of this stuff I still have to go Google like how it works, what's happening under the hood. Um, the, the way we're able to do this on top of the Dart documentation is because this material is licensed. Uh, by Creative Commons uh, 4.0, uh, where we we have free reign to adapt and, and remix as long as we attribute the authors uh, and, and make note of any changes that we've made. And so that's what we're doing here. Um, so we are going to go through the language samples. This is just going to be the hello world. And we're going to talk about it. Um, Jim, have you seen this stuff yet? I've run through br uh, briefly with Dart, yeah. played around with Flutter a little bit, but it would be nice to work with you through the documentation and to talk through it with somebody else, cool. another developer. Awesome. Cool. So uh, interrupt me whenever you can, Jim. All right. Will do. Hello World is uh, it's a tradition in programming. Any new language you start with, the first thing you want to do is like print out hello world to some screen. I guess if you were an Alexa developer, you would get Alexa to say hello world since that's the output. Um, so that's what we're doing here. Um, okay, this is just text on a page. Where can we actually go see this run? We can, uh, I'm going to command click try dart and that's going to open up a new tab. Sure. The history of hello world was back when the Macintosh computer was first introduced by Steve Jobs and Apple. The first thing it said was hello world. And that's how the Mac introduced itself all those decades ago. Oh, it did. I didn't know that. So it, it, they kind of set the, the tone. Okay. So we can, um, this, uh, this dart.dev, it, it loads this hello world program. It looks like they have some preset ones here. Uh, so this is nice. I didn't even have to copy and paste this over. Um, if I run this program, you can see it prints to the console the text "Hello World." Are you Just looking at the language syntax for Dart, it's very similar to C type languages such as C sharp, Java, Kotlin, the usual curly braces, void keyword, and of course, print with parentheses and strings wrapped around single quotes. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah, it's got a lot of, um, in my mind, there's nothing really new here, right? Because, because this language was created um, in what, after 2010, like 2011, 2012, whenever they started at Google developing the Dart language, um, a lot of stuff has happened before then. And so they were able to take all those experiences, not only in, uh, I guess, performance of the language itself, but also how developers use it. Um, yeah, it should be very familiar to anybody with 
some programming experience. Um, the, the void thing, that was new for me. Like we don't declare the return types, even if it's void in Ruby, um, because I think it's a dynamic language. Um, so, so yeah, the, um, what I see- A little bit about my background. Yeah, um, I spent years writing C Sharp and Java and a little bit of JavaScript front end as well. And those languages very similar to Dart where we have to declare our return type, even if the code just executes and declares and returns nothing, mm -hmm. hence the void keyword. So shouldn't it just know, like if I get rid of void, shouldn't the program be smart enough? Ah, look at this. This is very helpful. The function main should have a return type, but doesn't. Try ah, return type. <laughs> now, I believe the thinking is every function has to return something, even if that very return is nothing itself. Mm -hmm. But it's printing over here. So isn't that returning a string? No, it just, it's not returning a string. It's just printing it. It's just doing something. Just doing something. Think of, I have to say too. <laughs> think, of, think of it this way. Uh, if you ask a server at a restaurant to do something, for example, oh, please go and tell the cook to cook my food. The server will go and tell the cook to cook the food. But he, he or she, the server, is not actually returning anything to you compared to let's say if you ask the server at a restaurant to return the check and mm -hmm. give that check to you yeah think of it that way nice great analogy i love it okay so it's not a return type like string for example and you see even before we click run um i think dart has this thing called ahead of time complicate uh, not, not complication compilation aot um and that is um no Wait, ahead of time compilation. I almost said AOC, but that's that's a different thing. <laughs> so uh, yeah. I certainly hope it's not complication ahead of time. That will be absolutely <laughs> awful. <laughs> yeah. Um, so so it's 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 like think of this as like that little paper clip in Microsoft Word that's like, uh oh, something went wrong. Ah uh, uh, yes, Clippy. Clippy. I think Microsoft is actually bringing Clippy back. Got it. Well, this is, this is like a nice form of Flippy. It's like, even before I run, it's telling me, dude, something's up. Um, this ain't right. So um, the body might complete normally, causing null to be returned. Try adding either a return or a throw statement. Um, yeah. And so what we want to- Wonderful IntelliSense. Yeah, let me, let me see if I can make this bigger too. No. So if we, oh, Jesus. Did you see what just happened? Huh. I don't know what's going on. That was, was very weird. Oh, okay. This try dart. Um, <laughs> yeah, this, sorry, this try dart. You see in the URL how it has that hash symbol. Uh -huh. it's just an ID. We're on the main page. We're on the splash page of dart.dev at the bottom. <laughs> That's all this is. I thought it was its own page. Okay. That's why when I zoomed in and out, it kind of like went to those other things. So. If we wanted, uh, if so we the writing, uh, so the routing for try dart just takes you down a little bit on the page. It's just embedded. <laughs> so if we want to make this bigger for people watching it, we'll have to do that on our own video editing. Um, but they'll have the documentation in front of themselves as well. So, um, yeah, so it's just doing something. It's not returning a um, a value. So we want to say void. Uh, the other thing to note, I think that's important is this word main. It's very special. So, some people refer to it as the entry point in the program. I like to think it of as like, it's the first thing that it's going to, that the, the, the Dart program is going to look for as like, this is where I start executing. It's like the top level thing. Um, for example, if you were like, I really don't like main, I want to call it start. And you try to run it. There wasn't any fancy ahead of time, uh, compilation, but it says no main method found, compilation failed. Okay, so you have to have uh, this main. And this is, this is also a good way to develop sometimes is just doing error driven development, not trying to get it right or perfect every time, just trying something and reading the, the error message. 
reading the error message very very important for any software engineer you usually often, the yeah. error messages tells you exactly where to look yeah yeah okay um i think it's also interesting like main could take some arguments in here but but doesn't uh for this example but you do have to have these curly braces i think i don't think you can do this okay functions must have an explicit list of parameters all right so even though it's empty this is just how it's supposed to look so this is how dart looks um the other thing, because we're returning void and we're just printing, we're doing something, we don't have to have a return keyword. Let's see what happens when I try to run this. Yeah, it works. So maybe maybe the return is helpful and it's just redundant. Um, yeah. yeah, because print returns void, I think if you return print of something, then it's, it's still just gonna return void. It's just like redundant. Aaron, what would happen if you return just the hello world string with the void keyword? Okay, so let's do return hello world. I think the first thing you're gonna notice is um, it can't return a, a value from void. So ah, let's immediately- So the return value in the method signature truly matters. Yeah, yeah, it really does. Um, and even though Dart has type inference, I don't think on functions it's going to infer the type. I think you have to say it um, explicitly. So now that works. It didn't print anything. It's just taking this, like the check in your, your server statement, you know, your waiter um, is returning this, this string. Uh, whenever the main function is called. We're not doing anything with it. It's kind of just hanging out. Um, I don't even know if we need to return in that case. Oh, it looks like it. Yeah, a non-null value must be returned since return type string doesn't allow null. Okay, so we need to, when we have, when we're returning a value, I think we need to explicitly return it. And even in this case, just to verify there's no type inference should have a return time that doesn't. One of the good things that I've noticed about dart.dev that Android Studio, or maybe, I don't know about VS Code, but Android Studio, which I use, is I don't think they have errors with links like this. So if I say view docs, it's gonna take me to the special page that says always declare return types. Um, and it gives us a little example. Um, the I've worked with various JetBrings products IDEs such as mm -hmm. IntelliJ, PyCharm, Golan, the whole gamut, including Android Studio. They don't have documentation like this mm -hmm. where there's an actual link. But I believe you can download the documentation into um, and embed it into the IDE itself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we should do that. Um, because this is helpful. Um, always specify a return type when declaring a method or function. You'll see later in variables that we don't have to do that. Um, but it looks like for methods and functions, we, we have to do that. And that helps the, it says the analyzer to check your code. So remember before we ran it, it would give us those errors. That's what's happening behind the scenes. The analyzer is checking our code. Okay. Um, so let's go back to print. Uh, hello world like this and we want to return void you'll notice we still get an, an error expected to find a semicolon and it's pointing to the main function this isn't the best error message um because it's like it doesn't really tell us what to do we kind of have to know that dart is super specific it's very exacting whereas in, in ruby i can say puts which is similar to print with a mm -hmm. string like this. And I can or cannot, like it's my choice if I use parentheses or not. Um, but in Dart, it's like, there is one way to do something. And the beauty of that is as long as I know that way, I really don't have to think and use mental energy about 
what style I'm going to use or try to interpret. It's always going to be consistent like this. Um, when it comes to Ruby and Python dynamically typed languages, whenever you call a function with input value, you don't necessarily have to use uh, the parentheses. But in here in Dart, we're wanting to call the print function by passing in the input of the string hello world. Hence, it's forcing our hand with the parentheses around the print call. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, another thing is, this kind of looks like JavaScript, honestly, or like you said earlier, Java with the void. I think JavaScript, I think this is valid JavaScript, right? <laughs> if it is. Function. Um, but in JavaScript, I think semicolons are optional, right? Um, but in Dart... In JavaScript, semicolon is optional. Although more often than not, JavaScript shops do enforce the semicolon mm. with a proper linting. Mm. Okay, so I had a, uh, the analyzer gave me an error. And also when I ran, it gave me an error. And it, so the analyzer says expected to find semicolon on line two. That doesn't exactly tell you where it is, but when you run the program, it does tell you exactly where <laughs> expected the semicolon after this, uh, this being where they're pointing to with that little carrot, um, which is great. It tells you exactly what you need to do. Try to test out the string, wrap it around double quotes rather than single quotes. Mm -hmm. I think Dart allows both. Not sure which is the proper uh, best practice. Mm -hmm. I've personally coming from other languages, you always use double quotes. Yeah, I think in, for some reason, I wanna say in Flutter, they really only use single quotes and double quotes can get you in some trouble or something but I'm not sure off the top of my head right now. Um, I think it may have to do with interpolation. Uh, but yeah, it looks like they both work. So yeah, so we have a, um, a return type, even though it's just doing something, we have to say that it's doing nothing, right? It's, it's <laughs> that it's returning nothing, um, which is void. Um, yeah, we have this main function. That's where our program starts. Uh, here's another interesting thing. So opening parentheses and closing parentheses, that kind of like wraps the thing that's being done. If you want to do it on one line though, I think what you can do is use a fat arrow syntax like this. And voila, it works, yay. Ah, appears to be valid Dart code. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the, the fat arrow, or I forget, there, there's other words for it, but that's what I've I'm always talking. ever known it as fat arrow. Yeah. Um, okay, and, and, and so yeah, we can, we can sim uh, simplify one line statements to, to, be, to exist on one line. Um, so sometimes you'll see that. So if you ever see that and you're like, and maybe it's confusing because maybe the, the, the line itself is like really long or, or complex. You can always just convert it, you know? There might even be a way to do this in your IDE or it'll do it for you. Um, yeah, you wanna do something like that. So yeah, this is, this is the hello world. Um, I don't know how much, how much more we can elaborate on this, Jim. Was there anything else in the, the documentation? So every app has a main function. Um, what does this top level thing mean? Like what is top level print versus regular print? You know, I'm not sure of the precise definition of top level. I'm assuming it means importance, but let's, let's go to the old Google. Okay. Let's search what top level functions mean, the precise definition. Top level domain. Top level function, low level functions and top level functions. Here we go. Okay. Top level function is a term that describes writing program code outside of sub or function. Let's actually run the program. Discursed. 
or not allowed on languages that are expected to be complex. Does that make any sense to you? Very ambiguous. Let's see if we have another um, another answer. Top level functions in Kotlin. Let's go try that out. Ah, behind a paywall. Unfortunate. They exist outside of any class object or interface and are defined directly inside a file. The fact that the functions are not nested inside any structure, so they're at the top of the hierarchy of classes or functions. The way I understand ah. it, it's just able to stand on its own. You don't need like uh, object equals object.new and then object.print or anything. It just, it's just there and you're able to use it um, because it's defined, like it's, it's kind of like globally available, I guess. Makes so, sense. I mean, yeah. Other than that, I don't have any other thoughts on Hello World. Seems as simple as it gets. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty great. Um, so that's, that's kind of Dart in the nutshell. So, um, Next, we'll go to, to variables in another video. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Bye, guys.